<laughs> so today I want to talk um, about one compiler plugin I was working on uh, last couple months, which messes around with uh, constraints and with instances of classes and CFCs. So that's why, first of all, a disclaimer that uh, I've never committed anything to DHC. I never really worked on it, so I may understand something quite wrong in, in the compiler because when I had to write this plugin, I had to dig in there for, for a while, but I don't know if we out, if the conclusions I draw from there are <laughs> really correct. So for those who, who has more experience with GSC, please, uh, if I say something really wrong, just interrupt me and <laughs> correct. <coughs> So, um, let's start. Uh, the plug being is for constraints. So first I will discuss um, what is constraints in, like, in general in GHC and Haskell. Then um, um, go through a bit through one tutorial by Austin's site, uh, uh, which is about uh, ref reflection, reflections. So um, dynamically constructing um, constraints plus instances and uh, manipulating them. And then I will uh, finish with describing my plugin and telling what it actually does. So first of all, constraint. <laughs> um, everyone knows, even the most beginners, that constraints are something we have on the left hand side from a, this, this double arrow in function definition in classes and, and other signatures. So uh, there is a kind constraint which normally occurs on the left hand side from, from uh, this double arrow. And uh, there is a definition of, of this kind <coughs> in, uh, in the module data kind. Um, what can be a constraint? First of all, these are type classes, so all the usual uh, classes, show, monad, no monad, whatever, they all have kind constraints. Then tuples of constraints when we have multiple constraints, these are also constraints. They are, as I understand, they are flattened in, in doing type checking into, into, uh, into flat tuple because you can actually specify them like nested many times in, in definition, but it doesn't matter in the end. Then, uh, there are equality constraints and uh, implicit parameters and um, with a constraint, uh, constraint kind <coughs> extension you could also manipulate with them as, as with all other kinds so um, you can define uh, types of monomes, type families uh, and do other uh, stuff with it. Um, yeah, regarding constraints Regarding equality constraints, there are actually quite a lot of equality types in in GHC as I, as I found out recently. Um, the usual one which I expose to a user are um, this tilde and double tilde, which is a homogeneous uh, equality and a heterogeneous equality, meaning that uh, the left and right hand side of equality constraints are uh, in, in homogeneous, uh, have the same kind, and in uh, heterogeneous equality, have a different kind. There is also a um, very nice uh, class called uh, coercion, <coughs> also wired in GHC, which allows to uh, compare repre uh, runtime representation of types. <coughs> but in the end, uh, the interesting thing, as I understand, uh, that all the uh, equality constraints after that checking, they just go away and they have no uh, runtime representation. So, for example, uh, coercible and uh, yeah, coercible and this double uh, tilde and tilde, they all uh, kind of usual have usual type class definition, uh, yeah, type class definitions. Um, but they have as a constraint in, in the definitions those uh, uh, unlifted, so-called unlifted constraints, which never appear in, a, in, in actual types. And so here the result, kind, uh, this is kind void, a nullary tuple, a nullary primitive tuple, so it, it has in 
doing programming distribution simply doesn't exist. Um, so with the constraint kind, we can, uh, with, the, with the data constraint kinds extension, we can manipulate constraints as all other uh, kinds. So we can, for example, define a, a generalized algebraic data type, uh, which would have a type parameter um, of kind constraint. And then we can do lots of uh, very fancy things with it, like uh, um, putting inside some uh, class constraints and moving them around and um, restoring them later by pattern matching against um, the generalized algebraic data type mm -hmm. constructor. This uh, particular data type is defined in a, a, a library called constraints which has lots of uh, interesting combinators to work with it. And it also, the library also exports um, this data type, type called impalement, which means um, it's like a, this double arrow, but not at, at the um, signature definition, but at the high level. So, so um, if you look at the constructor, constructor of this data type, it has a, um, some constraint in, inside, and uh, it, it's fine. So to create to create um, a type, you would need uh, um, to bring into scope the constraint, and, and then uh, it, uh, you can get the dictionary type. So um, yeah. Let's look what we can do with constraints. <coughs> um, first of all, you can pattern match against uh, uh, data type dict and then get the constraint into scope. So this first function, for example, it does uh, exactly the same, but more in continuation style, where uh, if if you have a dictionary uh, dict with a, some constraint inside, you can get access to this constraint um, in, a, in some function which requires it. So you just provide uh, the function with dict, you provide dictionary, and, uh, and the function you want to execute this, such as in scope of this function, you will have this constraint. Then uh, by defining a few other things, you can, uh, for, for entailment, you, uh, you can actually uh, define, the, define the category. So, and, and with these few other uh, functions, you can um, modify con constraints, you can uh, derive some constraints from the others. In particular, one interesting definition in, uh, in uh, data constraint.unsafe is unsafe derive, which allows to derive some constraint on, a, on or some instance on the new type of over some type. So if, uh, here it says if it's, if it's coercible, new type, uh, old type into, into new one, you provide a um, uh, constructor of this new type and then you get this type of entailment such that if one, uh, if uh, this constraint holds for old type and it also holds for new type. This is uh, very interesting in, in the sense that um, if you have um, a few instances of one type uh, and you want to derive them for a new type, rather than uh, explicitly deriving it at such that GHC knows about it, you can um, pack it into, into um, this dict and then using unsafe derive you can uh, kind of mutate the instance so that it works on the new type. Uh, this is this works because a new type has uh, new types have uh, exactly the same representation at some time as a uh, um, types they are wrapping so that um, you can expect if if you want the same behavior of, yeah. of some instance of a new type you can just uh, provide it as if it was a original type not new type 
And this function, I, I will use it later a lot. In, in both cases, it's unsafe. Hmm? Yes, why is it unsafe? What? Um, why, why is it unsafe? Yeah, um, because first of all, <laughs> there might be already an instance of of uh, of this type of class for uh, an unified wrapper, so um, it will clash then. Then, um, I mean, you might may want to redefine the behavior of some type class over this type. So, um, <coughs> if especially if the instances, uh, if if you define usually in a normal way the instance for a new type, and when you provide this one, it will be just uh, undefined which which diction it, it gets. And um, <coughs> And uh, so if, if we yeah. <coughs> so with this library we can um, do lots of interesting stuff with constraints if if we need. <coughs> but in the end um, whatever we do using a constraints library, we manipulate with existing constraints which were defined before that in, in GEC. But what if I want to create some uh, new instances from, from scratch and then provide it to some uh, other functions without actually defining them in GHC so that um, it, it doesn't make... So if, if, we, if, if I don't want to have lots of instances, for example, for, for uh, my types. Um. <coughs> yeah, I, I I just want to, sometimes I just want to um, <coughs> provide instances within uh, some functions, but do not define them at very the very top level. Sorry, uh, just maybe the jump in your head. Can you, uh, with this this way, have two EQ instances for some type? Like, um, here I use one, here I use another one, here I use another one. Well, um, if you if you um, kind of kind of yes, so you um, um, you can define, for example, um, multiple uh, instances for different new types of one type. And then uh, wrap them into dict, and then uh, use unsafe, underrived, and kind of the same function, but for for re reverse uh, things, so that it won't get uh, not all all types in the times, but reversed. And then you can define uh, just a few dictionaries with each different different dict, and then uh, um, yeah, just use them as as you want in. in in different situations, different. But it's so the compiler won't complain in that case. If it, yes, because I mean, if you, if you define it for if you define uh, one base type and uh, without each instance, and then you have ten different new types, and then ten different instances for each or 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 whatever else class, then you just drop them into dicts and keep somewhere as a as a functions. Then you. Uh, Pattern match against this dict, so, or, or uh, you use unsafe, not derived, but underived, so that you, you can curse a new type into a normal, into an original type, and then uh, apply like a pattern match on, on a dictionary to get instances you want. Oh, okay. oh, what is this? Yeah. <coughs> For example, yeah, or just pattern matching. <coughs> and, uh, but what if we don't want to define it? Um, Defined against this at all, or, or we, we can we want to define them on the fly and just supply functions like you should compare against this, or um, for, for other uh, type classes supply full dictionaries for these type classes just in the, in the arguments of a function. And this is exactly what you can do with reflection library. 
So here I will just follow the tutorial by Western site from 2013, uh, quite a while ago. It's very nice tutorial. No, I will I will I will go through it briefly. But uh, if somebody is interested in, in this topic, definitely should uh, read it. So the whole API of um, reflection boils down to these two definitions plus uh, refiles with one uh, single function in it and uh, and uh, this weird function. And uh, this is an example again in this tutorial what you can do with it. Um, here if you look uh, at the example, you call function refi with uh, some type a here in our case it's int and then supply some function in it and this function actually has um, this type uh, which uh, looks rather weird <laughs> so b here is a is a proxy type it's uh, it's it's not actually an integer and uh, we use this uh, class defined here to get back the uh, value we stored, kind of stored here. So um, if if you just look at the interfaces, it looks um, if if you don't start to guess how it's implemented, it looks uh, kind of okay. You you supply some value into this function a, so it's uh, stored somewhere. And then you can access the same value using function reflect inside uh, the lambda. And um, <coughs> but when you start to think how it how it is it how it's possible to implement verify, uh, it becomes quite uh, funny, interesting. So let's have a look at the implementation. Here's how it looks like. <laughs> um, first of all, um, let's let's go one at a time. Um, what what is this <laughs> new type magic? Um, so we know that in GHC, new types have exactly the same representation as the types uh, behind them. So they are uh, at some point they are just transformed into into conversions uh, of customers. So um, we know that if we have a type uh, magic AR, <laughs> in, in fact it is just uh, this uh, lambda. And here we actually needed only um, <coughs> because of some limitations of, of GHC that we cannot pass it directly here and get um, it, it will just uh, complain uh, about some step checking. Then um, the interesting part here is um, how we can coerce this lambda into some function. So we say coerce applied to, to this argument. And then we supply two more arguments here. Um, original value, and here comes A as, a, as another um, function, and the proxy. So this must be the result of untape coercing. This thing must be some function of two arguments. But um, here this looks like function with one argument. So <laughs> what happened? Um, in GHC, in, in the core, um, all uh, classes are gone and replaced by dictionaries dictionaries of uh, functions they have. So um, basically, whatever number of uh, constraints we have here, these are all just more arguments to the function in, in the core view. So instead of, um, yes, a, a nice example from this tutorial, how how we can argue about this type we supply here, magic air. 
So um, magic is a new type constructor, so this is just the same as uh, um, this lambda. Then um, the first argument is a last constraint, so it's actually in the, in four it replaced with a with a uh, pointer to dictionary, which contains this uh, fu functions of uh, of this class. And then interesting thing is that um, since it becomes kind of a usual data definition of dictionary, if it has only one argument, a GHC also optimizes, uh, kind of optimizes it, it declares it uh, not as a data, but as a new type. And as a result, it's again, uh, this class would, in, in a code, would be kind of a new class, <laughs> which is just a, a wrapper on top of one function here, reflect. So if we had uh, more functions in the class definition, then uh, um, this trick would not work. So we would have a normal data type, a dictionary data type, with uh, several fields in it, and this coercion, coercion would not work. But if um, the class has only one single function inside, then um, we know that it has exactly the same representation as this function itself. So that's why we can um, transform this function, I mean, this, this function has the same representation as uh, this one. The only single function in this class is uh, has this signature proxy as to a. As a result, um, we know that um, our type magic uh, R has the same representation at runtime as uh, this function at the end. Well, in fact, coercion doesn't care about anything of it. It just uh, just bypasses the type checker completely, so um, it's our responsibility to say, yeah, we know that it should work, but um, I don't know of a way to, to make it kind of, kind of prove to, to show it to compiler that it's actually the case. So, so I'm, assuming, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm assuming that this optimization of how the dictionary looks like for one an element class is also run at O0 o without an optimization, right? Because otherwise yes, this yes, would so, so break it, horribly. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not an optimization in the sense that you apply it after you've generated the initial version of the code, but it's rather in the very beginning. It just there's a flag in, in the somewhere in the generating process to say that if, if it's a new type, and so if it has only single uh, function, and just generate a new type dictionary, not not a data dictionary. <laughs> so it's 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 so remarkable for me was to realize that uh, classes are so much the same as as usual types, but even they have the same things uh, but new types. <coughs> and uh, example which we saw originally here this. A uh, single function, verify, and which takes to uh, the lambda inside, takes this proxy parameter, and uh, this is function reflect, which is a part of the, of the class. So, um, first we just go one by one and wrapping everything that happens there. First, by definition, verify is a uh, this unsafe coercion of this uh, <coughs> uh, lambda and uh, up, then applied to arguments. Then uh, we find out, we, we replace the uh, dictionary uh, constraints arguments with normal arguments. So then we have, yeah, uh, in reality, two arguments, not, not just one argument in this function. Then, uh, yeah, magic is also a new type constraint, so we, a uh, new, new type constructor, so we remove it here. Then, uh, this can be reduced. 
and uh, yeah, in the end we just have a few const functions applied to to our integer argument we had in the beginning and the proxy. So in the end, all of this can be eliminated and uh, turn into a quite fast implementation with minimal overhead. Um, but how if if we have not a um, this new type classes which has only one field but normal proper uh, classes with a few functions in, in the dictionary how how do we proceed with that let's see with another example from the tutorial on the monoid monoid has two functions <coughs> and uh, yeah up and empty we define our artificial dictionary for that then um, we need another um, new type wrapper for our type just to define a proper monoid instance for it. So here we use again that type class called three types and we just define <coughs> a normal monoid for this new type wrapper but um, we implement it in terms of our artificially made monoid. And uh, adding a few other uh, helpers, so just want to, to wrap it up. And uh, um, another function to actually run something with with this manually created instance. So here in function run, we just supply two uh, functions, which will be placed into in, in place of map end and empty in Manoid definition, and then it takes. Uh, lambda the same as in the first example and uh, um, kind of brings up with monoid uh, and created um, dictionary inside the lambda um, yep yeah, so on the outside it looks already as if we have uh, a nice as, as if we can actually get provide uh, those functions for for monoid like here uh, plus and zero and then we can run inside arbitrary function which requires a monoid. The only uh, problem here is that uh, we have to transform between uh, this listed kind of uh, new type wrapper mod and uh, normal type <laughs> back and forth. A more uh, flex flexible version <coughs> is here. Um, in, in this case, we um, Just define another uh, class, and we um, create for um, for every uh, class we want to make possible to uh, to get instances of this class at runtime. We define this verifiable uh, constrained uh, instance, and the associated uh, data definition would be our manually constructed. Um, data type for this uh, uh, manually constructed dictionary for this class. And then we uh, have um, other functions just to uh, to transform um, our instances from original type to lifted type and back. So, uh, Yeah, we the, the the main most important trick here is that we um,
Well, yeah, there's just a lot of checker uh, that's manipulating the type parameters. It's, it's rather hard to <coughs> explain it one by one. Um, but in, in general, um, using additional constructs, we can, um, um, in principle, using reflection library, um, construct this um, new um, construct this classes uh, construct synthesis on the fly using uh, applied um, dictionaries. So yeah, we have to create for for any class we want to uh, we want to make possible to do it. We we need to implement this uh, class for for it. Yeah. So yeah, just as an example here, again, we on on the use side boils down to um, using this function and manually providing the uh, the constraint to one. Wait a second. Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, maybe that's, this is not a well-formed question, I don't know. Uh, I understand the, the, the type of using, I mm -hmm. think, that right? there's this manual constructed thingy, dictionary, mm -hmm. and then you can, with, with like P, which is a, this verifiable constraint on yeah. the monoid inside, and then we have, if we have something like P A and A, we mm -hmm. can just take A out of it. So, what's the type of meant P there? Uh, there. <coughs> so we here in, 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 in our case, <laughs> isn't that just monoidal? Oh, that's mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Um, here we have we have from integer right so it's yeah so it has, it's, 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 mono, it's, it's monoid in yeah if, right. if you just look right. at, at here then it's it's uh, some from, some from integer and some monoid thing and uh, this so if if you look closer at this using thing so p is a monoid a is a so the question is 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 it a lift or is it a uh, int itself, right? So there are two yeah. possibilities: that if, if it's a lift or it's an int itself. And uh, well, from the definition here, it's it's from the signature here, it's int. And uh, the the trick the trick is here that um, we. We define this replace proof thing, which says um, if um, we have this constraint verifies on this type, then we also have the um, um, yeah, we, we get the same constraint on on original type itself. And uh, so what thing what this thing does in the end is uh, it gets a pointer to um, um, this instance of, of this manoid defined for type lift and then it's unsafely coerces it to manoid instance over <coughs> over say type A itself. And since um, Type lift is just a new type wrapper on top of A, so we can apply this. So there is nothing really terrible happening because um, um, with both instances, they are um, applied on the on the some type on some on two different types which have the same uh, time representation. So um, yeah, we supply this. Manoid instance into here and 
uh, kind of unsafely coerced it to to monoid as, as if we had the monoid instance for original type. And then we supply it to our original type. So this is definitely in itself an integer problem. Yeah. So will the, the definition of reified ints always be sub deck? Like in, in the method if in the um, is, uh, is there um, is there a would you ever fill in something different? Well I can I cannot come up with something right now. <laughs> but uh, I think I mean this right. this should be sufficient for any I mean yeah. if, if you if you just do it a regular way then that's always enough to, to supply this subject. So sub obviously if you want to control stuff. Mm. Oh, <coughs> like if you have if you have like a, a, a type class which or uh, which like uh, has a constraint that, that has other classes, then you have to deconstruct those. Right? Ah, okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So another question. I don't know if you know the answer. Uh, I understand what what's the purpose of this machinery. This is to make it more or less safe. But if we already know like the how GH, GHC works internally, and I look at the definition of monoid, and I see that the two two members come in this order, and I just construct the data, just just the data, and put the two functions into that data, and answer uh, 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 unsafe course to to be a big monoid in would it work <laughs> without all this. Yeah, I, I actually I guessed about it, but uh, I don't know why, for some reason I never tried it. But um, I would assume that it would not work, because um, I guess they're just uh, headers of the of, 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 uh, definition, they probably have some different flags or something like that. And, well, I don't know if, if we, like, uh, we offset pointers from, from, from the Dictionary to to um, these functions the same in both cases. Don't really I think, know. I think, it should be, I, think I, I think it would be an interesting experiment. It, it would be interesting <coughs> to try, but yeah. I would think the answer would be probable, probably, but I'm I'm wondering, aren't you that they're then adding an extra requirement that the ordering of how the dictionary is compiled, right? How the pointers are positioned. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you add this as your extra dependency, whereas this one is not doing that. Yeah, I know. And it's, okay. and it's all very finicky, right? If you, right. So if, if you change something to, inside to, to GHC, compile it, then it will be, break. And right, so you say. That's, that's why I said I understand what the purpose of this machine is. It's like this will work across GHC versions and, and, and everything. But I think the, the, the simple, very naive, Create a new data, yeah. pack it into it, convert it to big, match on it, and the, the only thing I'm not sure um, in GHC if uh, garbage collector, for example, goes through the uh, instance instance uh, instance definition pointers because there seems to be no reason for it. I mean, if they exist so statically from the very beginning, so to me it doesn't seem that there is any reason to. Uh, Traverse like to, to garbage collector to look through the uh, uh, for instance pointers, and then uh, if we just apply ordinary type instead of this dictionary function type, then uh, what if what if it's not tracked and at some point it just like erased by garbage collector? Yeah, and then obviously. <laughs> You, 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 you have to keep it alive somehow. Yeah, I, I don't know, to be honest, how. <laughs> yeah, I think it should work, right? I mean, I think Chorus doesn't change any runtime behavior in terms of the GC, right? The, the, if it's reachable, it's still reachable. If, it, you, if you can use it, if you can call it, you, you, it must be reachable, otherwise you would not be able to call it. I'm not sure how garbage works to remove, remove it. But if because, yeah, like inside, you have, suppose you have something like this using, uh, like it's, it's just inside an uh, unsafe chorus. It's not used in any way. Well, what like does it mean inside unsafe chorus? Right, the unsafe chorus is gone by at runtime. It's like it's not. It doesn't. 
change anything, right? The garbage collector doesn't know that there was an unsafe collector. I mean, like this thing as well, it like it creates a thunk, and that thunk, which is which runs the computation, has no no reference whatsoever, like to to, to the argument, to the dictionary argument. Yeah, I, I'm not sure here if 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 we have here not not a dictionary, uh, not not a, not a, a proper instance of some some other constraint, but a regular type. Will a garbage collector see this pointer and see that it's actually used, or it's it ignores? Does it does it ignore those uh, um, references on, on the left from the arrow? Because I mean, well, if I were implementing it, I would probably not look through through the left hand side from from the pointers which are here. So this dick is actually it's it's just that data type with one uh, pointer to something, right? And this something has type constraints. So if if I were writing this uh, garbage collector, probably I would not look through through this point because I know that constraints um, kind of define the level. I know the answer, but I don't know it now because I, in, in, in GHC uh, a lot of things change, mm -hmm. but in GHC 7 there was no special thing. So this was just a regular. It was just it just it was just a regular data thing, and and handled in the same way, garbage collection and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, is that behavior that you're relying on here uh, formalized anywhere? Like the, 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 so you are relying on the fact that uh, the transformation for high level of Haskell into core, like using dictionaries and all that stuff. But I could imagine that. Sometimes GAC is able to do some monomorphization instead, and that would break stuff, right? Mm. Or is yeah, it warranty that always you have those dictionary apps yeah, and well there is no possible optimization? Yeah, in a function, if, so if, if you define uh, <laughs> these few arguments in a function, few constraint arguments, few normal arguments, they will always be, whatever the optimizations, this definition will be there, which has like five arguments, two constraints and three normal arguments. And uh, um, if uh, you replace the argument not with a, uh, a, a normal dictionary, but with a specialized dictionary or something else, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so all the all the optimization comes after. Yeah, I guess. So if you if you have to float in or float out stuff, it doesn't. <coughs> at that point, it doesn't know where it came from, where the dictionary came from, and it will do it, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, another experiment I just tried. So if um, if we can uh, carry constraints inside dictionaries, why not uh, try to just carry the constraints themselves? So I tried to do that here. So I just define uh, some data without um, constructors which are supposed to have only one oh. I <coughs> so I assume that representation of this bare constraint thing is, is just a point to constraints it's, it's, it's just constraint itself so um, there is no um, data instructor here but rather I always get this um, pointer from a normal dictionary Doing the same trick as was uh, with the uh, reify. Um, here, couple helper types. So, since I know that this uh, C here is a normal at the core, it's, it's kind of a normal argument. So I would assume that um, this function kind of have the same representation as ID function, so which has just one argument and return itself. So 
So it would, whatever, what, what I do here is just replace this ID with, with the constructor. And that's, that is kind of a workaround to actually finally <coughs> get the constraint value itself from, uh, from dictionary. <coughs> but what, what, what to do with it? For example, um, I can define another class parameterized by um, this constraint and um, some value for which is constraint of light on. And the only function in there is, uh, is has bare constraint type. So what, what does it mean? So if we implement some instance for uh, or this personal constraint class for some class and some type, or I mean, can be um, not, not necessarily a full um, kind of parametric type or anything. But <coughs> if, we, if we provide here some, in some dictionary and transform it to bare constraint, we can apply the same reasoning for coercion between types. So we have this instance of cursible constraint, a uh, pointer to a dictionary, of a cl class dictionary, dictionary. So since it's um, one method class, then we can transform it to a function inside. But the function inside is uh, just a single value with no arguments. And this single value is a constraint. It should have a representation of a constraint. So um, by this logic, we instance of this has exactly the same representation as this instance in here. And what 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 I can do with it? Um, for example, I can implement here some complicated logic of selecting different uh, instances, wrap it into a dictionary, and then uh, write a plugin for a type checker, such that when I look for uh, this constraint, it would supply instead this thing, which I defined here. And I can define it kind of polymorphic, uh, uh, put some um, constraint arguments there, so that that checker applies them for me. I did that, and that actually worked. But I then I was buried with lots of uh, problems from Corel Inter regarding coercion. So I probably messed up with how, how to properly coerce something. But well, I managed to actually make it work. So I wrote a small plugin for, um, for type checker, such that whenever I look for um, some particular constraint uh, on some particular type for, for this constraint, I would just instead supply this uh, bigger constraint. And then you can, for example, uh, for type family, if you have a, a closed time family and five different uh, instances of it, you can implement five different times uh, this one, C8, uh, I mean five, uh, five different instances of type classes for each type family instance. And then uh, make a kind of unified instance using here, this, this thing with uh, something like uh, using a single concept or something like that. And then <coughs> implement, uh, in provide an instance of kind of for, for all in type plus instance for, for the type family itself, not, not for individual instances of the type family. Um, I did that, but then uh, um, I actually took another approach which I will show in a few slides. So um, we can do a lot of interesting stuff with uh, constraints and reflection libraries. <coughs> but what we still uh, cannot do is to transform those dictionaries back to um, classes with like vanilla instances, uh, which are uh, visible to, to GC. So I imagine something like that you define an instance, uh, you define just a regular um, uh, value with type dict, and then we can write some plugin which would transform this in 
into a proper instance with uh, uh, constraints and uh, type arguments, as usual. Um, why would I need to do that? So here is a small example. Let's define some type family, which is either integer or a double. Then we write small new type wrapper it, and then we want to implement some instances for it and provide it as a library to somewhere, somebody else. So in a, the first attempt would be to just, just write a normal instance here. Well, definitely it will <coughs> fail because <coughs> we need this constraint such that uh, into double A it should be no. So instead, we can try to derive it. Um, well, again, we need the uh, context. So let's try to do that um, the one deriving. Yeah, just the same error, but in the slide in between session. So if we add this uh, con uh, context here, that, uh, into double e also known when everything works fine, but it's, it's really ugly, especially if we have more than two uh, instances in type family, more, more classes, it, it quickly becomes really cluttered. Um, what else can we do? We can uh, define uh, in a single tone style a runtime type level information about which instance we have there. So I define, uh, first of all, uh, one singleton which says if uh, the type inside is a single, is int or double, and then uh, define a class with a single function in our style as we see before, <coughs> such that it returns uh, this singleton and then a few instances for it. And then we can define uh, instances of our type classes using only this single class as a dependency. So every time we implement something like loom here, uh, we pattern match against uh, against this single tone, get uh, <coughs> this call for information if it's int or double, and then we are uh, yeah, doing that for every single function in every instance, kind of works from interface uh, point of view. <coughs> so instead of having those <coughs> um, complicated into double fam type family constraints, we have just this single constraint known A, and we can define many classes, <coughs> and it will always work nicely. It's easier in at the call side. Um, also, but the problem is then I have to implement um, this tedious thing for every single function in every single instance, which is quite annoying. Maybe, yeah, I could do that with a template hub or something. But there is an easier way using. Um, yeah, using our dictionaries. Uh, one remark on known A there. Yeah, from definition here we have only three instances for int double and uh, arbitrary list, but we can also make it for um, for all types doing some overlapping instances, something like that, such that we always have in scope this known a instance. Um, but on the other hand, we can use constraints library and do something like that. So everything before here was the same. And then rather than defining instance manually, we define this function, yeah, which provides dictionary of this instance. And instead of implementing every single method, we just use unsafe derive from uh, slides ago. 
such that it just coerces the thing inside into into a new type wrapper. And well, this works. And even you can uh, yeah, simplify it, it um, <coughs> make it a bit um, more generic. Provide um, such a arbitrary function in which you can supply different um, S chains. So this way, I can easily create many new functions for all classes I need, all instances I need. <coughs> the only thing still that I want to have those instances at the like at the top level, so that they're accessible as uh, normal instances, and this thing doesn't allow it. So I implemented a plugin and, uh, for deriving that. You would just add one annotation to every um, de definition you want and get this actually an instance. How it works? Uh, behind the scene. Um, ba this is a um, core to core plugin, not a type checker plugin. So basically it uh, looks for this definition, gets the dictionary, uh, gets the constraint out of it, and uh, puts it into a, uh, binds it as a dictionary, dictionary function ID. So just adds this new definition at, at the core level, and that's it. And then, uh, well, since it's core to core class, it's, it's after type checker. So <coughs> it's not these, these definitions, uh, inst in these instances are not available in the same model. Uh, model. They are only available in the dependencies. But it works. <coughs> so just uh, adding some option to, to dump the instances from this model, we have in the end uh, defined here, uh, yes, one and two instances tick and move from here. Well, and also none, which we defined here today. And so, can't you do this via template Haskell? No, I mean you can. Uh, what you can do. Mm, yeah, this would be a splice, and then. And then manually write the code to make an instance. Yeah, I guess. Why not? But that's template Haskell. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Just um, first, the first thing which I couldn't work around is that uh, those instances should not be optimized the way before I actually get to them. I don't know why, but. Uh, for some reason, even the first time when when, when the first time I access the um, mod, like uh, guts of the model in the <coughs> in the plugin, if this instance are not exported or not used and then can export it, they already gone by that time. Even if I have annotations, maybe this is yeah I don't know why. I would expect that if I add uh, this compiler annotation using uh, Syntax for annotations in DHC, they, they would kind of keep it from uh, going away, but they don't. So those have to be exported. Then <coughs> there are some uh, obvious limitations that here should be only one single class constraint rather than many. Of, I mean, I could, I mean, you could implement it like more complicated logic of splitting and creating different instances, but that's not much point there. Yeah. Um, but then I thought that um, it's it's nice that I can, using this way, so easily um, make new instances for one single type, but what if I want to implement, uh, to, to derive all instances for, for this type, like uh, um, yeah, if I if I define something like a dollar instead of like a new type pattern on double, then I want to have all the instances like non-fractional or something. So rather than doing it manually specifying all the instances, um, I also added another plugin 
which looks for you for all the defined for this particular type, and then uh, gets all of them and copies them and uh, creates a new uh, definitions in, in this model model uh, for for a new type wrapper. So this is done in the <coughs> in my plugin and derive all pass which uh, looks for a declaration of a new type mm -hmm. and enumerate if, if it's a family, if, if it's a type family, then it looks for all instances of type family, uh, concrete instances, and then tries to tries to sub, uh, um, substitute the uh, concrete types from from uh, instance family and then look for type um, class instances. And uh, that I would just add here uh, to derive all instances for this number. And then, uh, was one surprise that we well, found actually lots of instances, I, they're kind of scrolled down far away. It, it gets all the instances from, I mean, first of all, everything from prelude, from base, and uh, orphan definitions. And then I got into trouble that <coughs> For some for some reason, for indirect uh, dependencies, it also got instances from GHC. Some actually from even probably hidden models, especially for for lists. Some some instances, which are definitely should not be visible to a user, they are still visible to a um, plugin when you look for through instance environment. So I had to uh, to filter them out. Um, let's have a look at example. Um, a bit, a bit more realistic example. Um, So what I want to do is, in the originally when I started to implement this plugin, was to um, write some, let's say we have some vector uh, data type, and we want to optimize it for some particular cases when it has only one single element, when it has two elements, three, four, like for OpenGL, for example, and when it has a, a like a, some Long, like general case. So this in this toy example, I have uh, four different implementations for this vector. Either just uh, uh, empty, like a unit type, then a scalar, then two-dimensional ve uh, two, two element vector, and the arbitrary length vector, which is just implemented by the list here. Then, uh, so the idea is that this would be a baseline implementation for a vector, and I want to make JHC know that if if uh, this is a two-dimensional, two-element vector or scalar, it should not actually create a whole list for it and, and use generic functions, but rather use some super highly optimized uh, functions for this particular instances. And instead of using all uh, and kind of unreliable rewrite rules and optimizations, I wanted to implement it such that it would be unavoidable to, to use those instances. So, uh, a closed injective type family here. Um, so, this is kind of backend type uh, family, which uh, parameterized by the type of, of element and uh, by the size. It's a uh, you know, type. So then we have this, um, yeah, the same way as as was an example. I create a um, single <coughs> to 
figure out which backend we're using currently. That's not so interesting. Then we define uh, a few like different implementations for uh, different types of backends. Here I just did, yeah. So yeah, I used for uh, single group and monoids and just for fun, like plus multiply different uh, different combinations of them just to make sure that they're, di they're different. And uh, um, just one function which would select the proper dictionary for for um, our instance, which uses um, our singleton uh, pattern matches against it, and then selects one of the one of the dictionaries for corresponding instance. So this one is also uh, parameterized over the constraints. So we can supply here ek single group whatever we want. <coughs> then. We implement a new type wrapper on top of it. Well, basically, it's the same, just a new type wrapper on top of the family. <coughs> and a few instances in for ecomic, show, port, um, semi group, monoid. So these are, um, the interesting part here is that um, I use, in annotation here, I use the instance with overlappable modifier, modifier. And then I use derive all on the um, vector backend so that um, it, diff it uh, creates overlapping instances, and then I have this overlappable generic instance. Such that if we don't know which instance it is, which type is it, then we use the generic function. If, if we know exactly which one, we use highly optimized the ones from, uh, from the previous model. And Yeah, and then yet here I, I just tried to use it in a few different ways with uh, some specified types and uh, with uh, <coughs> yeah also two, two times I tested such that uh, I don't know which exact list it is by <coughs> wrapping it into an existential um, uh, type so, so that um, it doesn't have the size parameter, so when we put the vector inside this sub vector here, it, uh, we lose this information. And uh, uh, yeah, so when we execute it, we can see that for the cases when we actually specify the uh, when, when the compiler knows exact uh, backend it uses because it knows the size of a vector, then it uses those uh, highly specialized types. And when it doesn't know, it goes back to that function I defined with uh, the black traces uh, the messages showing which instance I selected. So that I know here it's actually looked uh, yeah, six times for uh, dictionaries for that function. And uh, yeah, th resulted six times one for like for show, one for uh, semi group, one for monoid, and then yeah, this for two different instances. And interesting that if I remove this derived all. shows which uh, instance we have there. These are all uh, manually implemented uh, for instance. 
Okay. So I, I disabled drive all thing, and now I go for bit lookup of the proper instance, which I defined in the backend family, uh, every time for every uh, function. But when I, uh, and I have so many instances here, only those which I'm identifying. And when I replace it with, and when I unconnect it, so we have much more instances because we also use all we also um, make all instances for any type of for all particular uh, backends and uh, I mean, in this example, it's at least it gives an idea that it's actually possible to uh, make those uh, uh, separation backend where we could make different instances and then uh, efficiently find the proper type class, proper instance without any additional uh, overhead. So, using these two instance uh, paths, we derive like a most generic. Um, definition with such a uh, instance, such that uh, we know, such that it holds for, um, even if we don't know which exactly instance of type family is it, but if we um, uh, with derive all paths, we also derive all the particular instance with um, such that we overlap the more generic instance. And then in this case, it's kind of guaranteed that um, this implementation for a scalar would be the most efficient one because it just it just doesn't use the like a more generic definition because it's uh, already known at compile time. So just to uh, to make that clear, so in the in the case where um, back to base was in an existential wrapper, it's still it's dynamically then picking the special yes. case for two dimensions. Yes. So if if you imagine something where you have some high dimensional vector algorithm, whatever stuff going on, and uh, you have a polymorphic function, and you still want it to to pick a specialized uh, implementation at runtime, which is going to be more efficient than a generic one. It would still do that just with the overhead of finding the instance first. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, so instance already kind of minimizes this overhead. And rather than uh, looking up through this uh, diction, um, sing single dot type every, on every call of every function, it only looks at when looks for it when it actually resolves the instance. Um, but then, yeah, with, if, if we use something really polymorphic, then it, it falls back so this thing it cannot use super specialized version. On the other hand, um, even if the function provided by the libraries um, is not is very polymorphic, when we have it at call side specialized, already not I mean not specialized, we just know that it's like for dimensional vector, for example, it will at call side already replace it with the um, proper dictionary from the four dimensional vector, not from the generic one. And in this way, yeah, I also tried to do it that you can hide the whole this backend thing behind, and then depending on comp like package flags, for example, you can compile it with some backends without like SIMD, for example, in, in theory, and have super fast implementations for like matrix multiplication. But maybe also derive all can also be used for other things. If you just feel lazy to um, make a right generalized new type deriving and uh, enumerate like ten different classes for your thing, just write this derive all. And it will I, I mean, also this deriving um, 
probably a better way would be to make a uh, to invoke a actual generalized uh, uh, new type deriving mechanism to to make those instances for me after I after I enumerate them. But for now, I just stupidly copy the, uh, the function ID uh, and like, refer to it, apply proper arguments, and that's it. Assuming. Questions? Not then. Thanks, Arkham.